Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady and welcome to this video on fast addition and subtraction. This video is about the first addition and subtraction shortcuts that children need to learn before they are ready for formal calculation and especially before they're ready for column addition and column subtraction. I've put this video first in this series because it is so important for so many children. It's a step of learning that's really often missed. And then children find they're slower at maths than their friends in their class and they lose confidence so quickly. And if children miss this step, they find that they really struggle with formal calculation. It's absolutely crucial. So if I had to choose one video from this series to show people, it would be this one. So I'll tell you exactly what I'm talking about and then you can judge if it's something that you need to look at or not. If we look at an addition like this one, 68 add 5, a lot of children when they're about 6 or 7 years old would try to count on one at a time, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73. That is not going to be good enough for them to thrive with column addition. They need to be able to do this calculation in two steps quickly in their head. So for 68, the first step is going to be at 70. It's like a stopover point on a journey and it's a number ending in zero. And to get there we've added two of our five and that leaves us with three left to add. Therefore the answer is 73. So if your child can do calculations like these in two steps instead of counting on one at a time, then they're fine with this. The only other check is whether they can do it for subtraction as well. So if we look at a question like 34 subtract 8, would they know to go back to 30, which would mean they've subtracted 4, and then we've got 4 of our 8 left to subtract, and that's going to take us back to 26. Can they do that calculation in two steps instead of counting back 8 from 34, which would be trying to say 33, 32, 31, 30, 29, 28, 27, 26. That's too slow. So if they've got that, you don't need this video. Here's a link. You can go straight to the next video. And if this topic feels a little hard for your child, then you may well want to go back to the first series that I made, which was for the parents of the children who struggle most with primary maths. And here's a link to it now. OK, let's explain what this is all about and how we fix it if your child has a problem with this. This topic of adding and subtracting two digit numbers and one digit numbers, these kinds of calculation, is taught at age six on the English curriculum. and a lot of children struggle with it then and then it's missed. So when they move on to doing column additions and column subtractions, they're counting on or back one at a time for each little additional subtraction within the calculation. And that's too slow. They're not going to keep up with the big ideas. Their brain is too busy doing complicated small calculations they don't need to do to focus on the big picture and get the work done. I've worked in lots and lots of schools now and time and time again, this is the reason why some children are approaching maths like they're wading through treacle all the time and others are just flying. So let's look at the four steps you need to go through to fix this problem. Number one, in order to calculate in this way, children need to be really good at splitting small numbers, numbers less than 10, into two parts. So they need to be able to split 5 into 2 and 3 and 1 and 4. They need to be able to split 8 into 1 and 7, 2 and 6, 3 and 5, 4 and 4, and so on. And one of the reasons this technique of adding and subtracting in two steps is so crucial is because if you're doing it, you're always practicing that splitting of small numbers and it becomes automatic for you. But for the children who are not doing it, it doesn't become automatic and they forget their partitions of small numbers. They forget how to split seven into one and six and two and five and three and four. While the children who are doing it do it so much, they start to do it subconsciously. It's automatic. They don't even have to think about it. 
So the class splits with some children speeding forward and some really struggling. They may come to understand new ideas in maths, but they're slipping backwards because they've forgotten how to split small numbers, which is such a crucial skill in maths. So in step one, we need to rehearse small calculations within 10. Now you can either do that just by giving your child loads of questions. Two add what is seven? One add what is nine? Three add what is six? That kind of question. Or if you'd rather work on worksheets just to give them plenty of practice, you'll find that I've got a worksheet on calculations within 10. And you can download that from the file section of my Facebook group, which is Expert Primary Maths Teaching, or you can download it from TLS or TPT. There's links to the different sites in the description of my YouTube channel. However you do it, your child needs to be super quick at splitting numbers within 10. Okay, step two is to work on these fast additions. And again, this worksheet is downloadable from the same sites, the fast addition worksheet. Now, a child who is struggling to do this is generally not seeing the structure of the numbers to 100 as clearly as other children are seeing them. So they either need one of these, a bead string, or they need some pictures of bead string. And again, I've done a worksheet of one to 100 bead strings, which you can download from the same sites. So for this first question, 68 add five, they would need to be able to find 68 on the bead string. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, eight, there's two left. And then we're going to add five and they can see, they can count the beads one at a time, one, two, three, four, five and they can see the colour change shows two take you to 70 and you've three left to go to 73 to get your answer. And as they start to work on these questions, you want to get them to check their own calculations with their bead strings, to check they've got them right and to teach them this structure and to build their confidence. And if they make a mistake, don't tell them what they've done wrong give them the bead string and tell them to check it or give them the picture of a bead string if they're slightly older. If you want to buy one of these, mine came from TTS, I'll put a link on the screen. So step one was practice calculations within 10. Step two was work on fast additions with a bead string. Step three is to work on fast subtractions, which are harder and they're harder because it's easy to take the four off and get to 30 in this question. And it's easy to see you've still got four to take off if you know how to split eight into four and four. But actually working out 30 subtract four being 26 is quite hard. That's the tricky step here. And that's where the bead string is crucial again. If your child is struggling, this will give them the structure and the apparatus they need to have confidence, to sort out their own thinking and to really come to understand this topic. So step one was practice small calculations within 10. Step two was work on fast additions. Step three was work on fast subtractions. And again, the worksheet can be downloaded from the same place. And finally, step four is to make sure that your child is using addition and subtraction shortcuts in other places in their maths. When they're not working on this with you, do they still do it? And I'll return to step four in the video on the foundations of multiplication, where we'll be doing lots of that practice and you'll see some ways of checking your child's understanding and checking that they are doing this right. So this is crucial for children and you will be able to fix this for them if they are under 11. After that, it becomes a bit more difficult because children learn different shortcuts that aren't maybe quite as efficient, but that they know and are familiar and comfortable with, and it's hard for them to change. I've done lots of work on this with teenagers and adults who've struggled with maths all their lives and have blamed themselves and have seen themselves as being terrible at maths. And when they discuss this with me, they can suddenly see why. And they're not going to change now the way they do small calculations. But what they then know is that it's just a small disability in their maths that slows them down a bit. 
It doesn't stop you understanding or moving on with maths. You just need to go a little bit slower. And as you get to higher level maths, that matters much less. So this has been quite a long first video. Most of the rest won't be anywhere near as long, but it was such an important point, I had to explain it in detail. The key takeaways from this video are that before they start formal column addition and subtraction, children need to be able to use shortcuts for addition and subtraction. They shouldn't be counting up and down one at a time. They need shortcuts and they need that particular shortcut strategy that we've been discussing here. And you now have a four step plan for sorting out this issue for your child. Good luck with it. If you've any questions or comments about this video or you're struggling in any way with these ideas, please comment on the video on YouTube so that I can see what you're struggling with and have a chance to respond and help you out some more. The next video is on mathematical notation. It's much easier, much shorter, but if you're busy now and you want to go off and work on this video, please subscribe to my channel and click on the bell so that you're able to find it again. Thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. Bye for now.